observation, assessment and planning. Babies and young children are individuals, each with their own unique talents and abilities. Effective staff within early years settings seek to ensure that learning experiences, routines and activities build on information provided by parents and start with the child's needs and interests. Planning begins with skillful and purposeful observation of children and this enables staff to draw conclusions and plan next steps. Well, observations are vital in the nursery. Through observations, we see children's interests. We observe what they are interested in playing with, the resources they love to play with. We see how children interact with each other and with adults. And we also have the opportunity to just see how different children need different learning needs, individual learning needs. The observations we do, we plan on a weekly, monthly basis, and we we have some focused observations on specific learning outcomes, but we also have incidental observations. Each day, children do something that that's not been planned, so these are very important too. At the end of each day, the staff look at these observations and discuss them with each other, because a member of staff may have seen something different on a child. So we discuss these, and these are then taken into formal tracking sheets. And then, we, once we have discussed these, we can then see how we have to take children's learning forward and what aspects they have need, they need support in or challenged in. Assessing children in terms of their progress and needs is an ongoing process and is integral to planning, observation and implementation. By using this information effectively, staff, parents and children can create and maintain plans which can help to provide a focused and individualised approach. making observations. Sensitive and meaningful observations enable staff to get to know individual children well, ensuring that staff are able to plan and provide for children's individual needs and interests. Observation for me is at the heart of everything. So there are any number of observational spaces that you can take up as the observer. You can observe the, the, the playroom as a landscape, as you would like a landscape painting and stand back from it and see what's happening and the kind of nature of the interactions that are occurring and the use in the room. And you can come in closer and observe and see a bit more of what's going on. You can come in really very close and really be alongside a child but not actually actively intervening or doing anything, but you're observing, you're feeling, you're sensing, you're with them, and you can feel uh, the experience of the child. You can actually feel the resonance of the internal vibrations of the child when they're working or what they're doing. So there's so many different levels to it that it is um, a passion and a source of great excitement and a tremendous skill and one that I would say I go on developing throughout my life and I, I encourage those that I'm working with to do so as well. Staff and parents require to have a shared understanding of and commitment to the need for ongoing observations in supporting and promoting children's learning and development. Juristic play is also an excellent way for sitting back and observing the children. It allows you to see how their fine skills are developing, it allows you to see how their problem solving is coming on and it helps you to take forward next steps within your playroom. Sometimes it's nice to have a small heuristic play discovery area set up within your room or displays within your walls. Like we made up a small bit of material and there's discovery and items in there and you're developing their learning through their senses all the time. Observations take place naturally during everyday activity and interactions whilst other observations may be more specifically targeted for particular reasons, such as finding out more about the child in relation to their development and learning, social and emotional well-being, likes and interests, reviewing the suitability of resources and the layout of the space children use both indoors and out, sharing observations with colleagues, parents and other service providers is an important priority.
which has to be considered in a way that ensures the child is at the centre of all decision-making, in line with the vision, values and principles of getting it right for every child. At SHOTS we use a varied number of observation strategies, um, both within the room and within our planning. We use general observations to inform our planning, progress reports and um, to inform our children's special books so that we can keep track of the children's progress. We record the observations formally as well as um, verbally. We would pass on um, observations informally um, to parents on a daily basis um, just about what their children have been doing etc um, as well as discussing within the staff team and recording on planning sheets the observations. If we were targeting um, a child for a specific um, reason, you know, if we suspected um, perhaps developmental delay or they weren't reaching their milestone, then the practitioner would use a timed intervention to work out exactly where they were in their stage. Um, so the practitioner generally would set up, if you like, a scenario. Then we would intervene to see how far the child um, would go so as we were recording accurately exactly what stage they were at. Yes, we observe um, children in all situations. So, for example, um, it would be maybe within the playroom and the, the, the sort of and using all the areas and what the, what the child's interests would be. Um, there would be um, sort of how they use the resources, what do they do with them, what are they interested in, how can we take this forward, how can we extend their learning, what's their next steps, and also as well um, for their development you know, ensuring that they're reaching their milestones. We work very closely, you know, sharing the observations with the other staff during sort of observation meetings and planning meetings because observation meetings are based on what we have um, observed on that particular session with a particular child or children. And uh, what we will do is our observations are maybe sort of related to profile observations, which is part of our profile performer that we give to parents during our parent consultations. And our other observations are for children to put into our planning. Um, so we will then sort of discuss that as a team, you know, what sort of um, ways that we can support the children, you know, through the observations, uh, to how we can extend their, their knowledge and their learning and their interest. Sometimes um, our discussions are bit regarding observations that we've, that we've noticed are very informal and uh, we'll say, oh, did you notice that? What do you think we should maybe do to take that forward? And we'll throw our, our ideas about, you know, when we're just very informally. For children's learnings, normally we would chat to mum and see what kind of stage children are at, what kind of activities they enjoy. And obviously, if through spending time with a child, you get to see what they enjoy and we can offer them activities that will challenge them, that they enjoy and that we can see if they're learning, like a counting game. Assessment Assessing children in relation to their learning and development can take many different forms, for example, through observations or conversations. Working and communicating meaningfully and respectfully with parents, other key family members and relevant services is necessary if staff are to make valuable and accurate assessments of children. Children have a key role to play in assessment and should be encouraged to contribute to all stages as appropriate. Through um, interacting appropriately with the children, we're also able to observe, you know, what, what they're doing, you know, um, what skills they're using, um, you know, what, what particular small motor skills are they using, what are they having difficulty with, what kind of things are they interested in, um, all about their hand-eye coordination, there's lots of things we can observe also. We can observe how confident they are in doing that, how much they need the adult, we can observe how they are with the other children, you know, um, are they 
you know, are they sharing well? Are they able to take turns? Or is everything getting pulled and grabbed in their direction? So we would use this as an opportunity to make a wide range of observations, which obviously then would be important to take back to the rest of the team at the observation meeting and share that with the team. And then these observations, that may mean that we will provide other opportunities for the children within the playroom or within outdoor play. For example, if they've had an interest, if we've observed that they've had an interest in filling and emptying, you know, we, there's lots of things we can do there through water play, through sand play, through the sensory area within the nursery, through outdoor play and gathering natural resources again. So it's all about is using the observations to further develop that skill for that child in a wide range of settings. Getting it right for every child provides staff with guidance to help ensure that children benefit from support, which is appropriate to their individual needs. It may be that lots of children are using the same sorts of um, resources in a room, but they might be doing some very different things with them. So you might be thinking about, right, one child is really interested in putting things in, taking them out. So you might be thinking, well, rather than just they're interested in bags or they're interested in boxes, what, what you're thinking is not so much the content, but the concepts that the children are really wanting to um, explore. And so also it may be that one child is a much more lone learner. They like to experiment themselves, whereas another child might need a little bit more encouragement or a bit of support to engage with an experience. So you're thinking about not just what you provide, but how you provide that and the crucial role of the adult. And as we know, young children um, really need to repeat experiences, but it's key to observe to see when they still need to repeat but maybe when you need to know when to move them on um, and give them that little experience that's going to help them take their learning forward. So you know and for our youngest children sometimes we get that absolutely right and sometimes we don't but when we're planning we need to be really reflective about what's happened, has it been effective, what do we need to do now? So, you know, it is a, a core skill that um, we're always improving. Staff may find the national practice model that joins up the wellbeing indicators and the getting it right My World Triangle helpful in the process of identifying concerns and gathering relevant information about children in more complex situations. I've come to know the staff um, particularly well and it's very much a team approach, I would say, in the nursery. Um, I work very much with the staff, looking at how they support the children and looking a lot at what they do, that they do well, and building on that. Another way that I support the nursery is through doing in-service uh, training as well. And we try to widen that to other partners in the nursery, so we had people from the high school who came in, we had parents who were interested who came in, um, and I'm also, I mean, this, the, the nursery used me really flexibly, they used me really well, they asked me to do anything that they think that, that I'll be able to help and contribute with. So there was a parents group being run, so I came in and did some, some work with the parents, which is also really good because if there are issues, the parents already know me um, as a face, so it's not, it's not a scary thing to then say, we'd like Paula to meet with you to, you know, to have a chat about how we support your child. Recording. Like assessment, recording may be a continuous process throughout the observation, assessment, planning and implementation cycle. Records generally include observations and information from parents, as well as staff and, where appropriate, children themselves. Recording may take many forms from simple note-taking to video footage, pictures, photos or individual profiles or plans. It is important to ensure that any system of recording is manageable and does not take up too much time. We, we look at strategies, we look at ways of helping the children to develop further. One of the key things we've used has been using video work. So we've had some children who have had some issues in, help, in terms of their behaviour. And what we did was I asked staff to video 10 minutes where things were going reasonably well, but they thought it was, it was quite a good session with the young person but also to then video 10 minutes of a particular time in the day where things were, were more problematic or where they found it more difficulty. And then we sat down with the parent or the carer, um, relevant staff who were involved with the child, um, P5 support for learning if they were involved, and looked at what, 
what worked with the child, when were the times that, that things were being managed well, when were the times that, that the child was responding well. Um, and we picked out from that how we, the, the kind of structure that was best for that child, how we needed to manage that. Planning. Planning is only effective when staff take account of children's needs, interests and stages of development. Flexible planning that facilitates staff to be responsive ensures that opportunities for rich and meaningful learning experiences which are not planned for are also recognised and maximised. This could be, for example, responding to a change in the weather, a surprise celebration or further supporting children's learning and interests by going on a visit or researching on the internet. Spontaneously, um, you know, if it started to snow, which it frequently does in shots, um, we have been known to rush outside and collect snow and bring it in or take all the children out. We have to plan and risk assess, but it can be done fairly quickly so that the children make the very most of what's on offer. Also, if maybe a hard shower of rain came down, they like to go out and splash in the puddles. We also make the very most of all um, our gardens that we have with the very natural resources, the herb plants, the digging. Um, so we respond immediately to what the children are interested in or if they're choosing to go outdoors. If overall provision is to respond meaningfully to the needs of children and their families, planning needs to be informed by observations, regular assessment, and it has to include information from parents, colleagues and other professionals. The staff are very responsive to the children's needs. Um, it was noticed within observations that the children had been playing with keys quite a bit and they had been going towards our entrance door uh, to play with the key. So we took that further and we got a, a miniature door made for the children where they could actually unlock uh, keys. They had to find the appropriate key um, and then we mounted that onto our main door because that's where the children had wanted to play and then uh, yeah, it seems to be very popular. The key person system is extremely valuable in supporting approaches to observation, assessment and planning, as the staff who know the children and families best can ensure that discussions and decisions are on track and in the child's best interests. We're a very strong, motivated team. We work in room teams as well as a whole staff team. Each member of staff is responsible for their own group of children. It's the key worker system. If a member of staff is at training or on holiday or off sick, then the room team has the responsibility of looking after that child's education. Staff should place observation, assessment and planning at the heart of their practice and should see this process as a continuous cycle in supporting babies and young children. Taking meaningful account of the four key principles of the rights of the child, relationships, responsive care and respect will ensure staff help families to achieve the best possible start for all children. How do you ensure that your observations are focused and that you record significant information? Reflect on how you currently use this information and discuss the ways in which you could use it more extensively or effectively.